You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an, an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is widely reported that there is immorality among you, and immorality of a kind not found even among pagans, a man living with his father's wife, and you are inflated with pride. Should you not rather have been sorrowful? The one who did this deed should be expelled from your midst, I, for my part, although absent in body, but present in spirit, have already, as if present, pronounced judgment on the one who has committed this deed, in the name of our Lord Jesus. When you have gathered together, and I am with you in spirit, with the power of the Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of his flesh so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not appropriate. Do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast, so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. You hate all evildoers. Lead me, Lord, in justice. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful the Lord abhors. Lead me in your justice, Lord. But let all who take refuge in you be glad and exult forever. Protect them that you may be the joy of those who love your name. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory 
On a certain Sabbath, Jesus went into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely to see if he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might discover a reason to accuse him. But he realized their intentions and said to the man with the withered hand, Come up and stand before us. And he rose and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil? To save life rather than to destroy it? Looking around at them all, he then said to him, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they became enraged and discussed together what they might do to Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. So happy Labor Day to everyone, and I, like you, am very grateful for a cooler weather today. Yesterday, I think it was about 100 degrees, and we're all in about five or six layers of clothing, as you know, so to this, we, we shall give thanks to God, and I apologize for being a couple of minutes late. We were, we were waiting for Father Andrew, so he may show up in any given moment now, but the, uh, he probably didn't get the memo that Mass is at 9 a.m. today, and just for all of you, to your delight, starting tomorrow, we shall also resume the 6.30 a.m. Mass, in which Father... Brendan is very excited and happy to take tomorrow morning. And tomorrow also is the first day of school on the nativity of our blessed mother. Yes, polite golf clap there. So speaking of, of labor, our, our teachers, I'm sure, are just chomping at the bits, getting excited to resume school tomorrow. And as you know, when it comes to work, human labor, that's, it actually precedes the original sin. Sometimes one might say that, well, with labor, that's the punishment for the sins of our first parents, but it actually precedes it insofar as God had ordained that Adam and Eve would have dominion over the earth, and that is their collaboration with, with God's plan. In other words, they did not find it burdensome before the fall. Now, of course, after the fall, Adam will have to now to, to seek food, to work for food with the sweat of his brow. And Eve, of course, would then experience pain in bringing forth children. That's consequent to the fall. Whereas for all of us, when it comes to labor, it's actually that's very redemptive. We can actually work out our salvation through doing work. So one should approach work as seeing it as something that this is my way of growing in holiness. So whether it be people who possess great talents, I remember back in those days at the Abbey, we had manual labor every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays as novices. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays after we pray midday, lunch, and then we would gather, and whether it be Father Gregory Dick or Father Vincent Gilmore, they would then give us the, our work assignments. Okay, so Father Godfrey was very gifted at art. He was probably given some cush assignments somewhere working on his, his painting. Whereas I, I remember I, I had a degree in biology from UC Irvine, so I thought I was all that. But my, my two years as a novice, I, I was cleaning toilets for, for those first two years. And of course, I see our seminarians out there, they know exactly what I'm talking about in terms of giving an assignment and just doing it. You, you're given an assignment, you are to work in silence, and that's how you contribute to the common good. So I, I want to leave you with that thought, that the common good for all of us here, whether you are able to 
toil the ground or to do actual physical manual labor like Mr. Desi or Ms. Loy who are very gifted men. And so they're able to good, put their talents to great use to contribute to our community. But even if one, if one were not able to do those things, you know, the work of God, the Opus Dei, Opus Dei, would be what exactly what you're doing right at this moment. You're doing the work of God. You're doing the work of God even if you're bedridden and you're not able to come to Mass and you're watching it in your prayers, in offering up your sacrifices, the pain that you're going through. Whatever human suffering that you have, you can use that for the Opus Dei insofar as you offer up your pain and suffering and that is how you are contributing to the salvation, to the redemption of mankind, and your own personal salvation. So as we go forth this day, let us be happy and rejoice that we are able to be here to contribute to the work of God in his sacred liturgy. And let us go forth never allowing the things of this world to, to bring us down, because whether there be tumult or chaos out there, you always have the opportunity to redeem the world through offering up your human suffering. And that is the right way to, to look at human labor. It is not an end in of itself, right? If you make anything an end in of itself, you will commit the sin of the scribes and Pharisees, where they, they saw the law as an end in of itself, whereas God is the ultimate end. So for the scribes and the Pharisees, their faults would be to see the law as the ultimate end without seeing God in the equation. And for those who see work as an end in and of itself, then anyone who's not able to do work, whether it be the old or the young, will be considered not useful. Whereas you and I, we see the end as God. Therefore, anything that contributes to that, whether it be manual labor, public worship, all those are ways whereby we can redeem the world. Please stand for the prayer of the faithful. Let us make our petitions to the Father, consoled by the knowledge of His love and care for us. For the Church, May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit continuously refresh and renew her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public authorities, may God grant them strength to stand for goodness and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are depressed or troubled in mind, may the healing presence of Christ be upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all gathered here in worship, may the Holy Spirit guide us in nourishing, our, in nourishing one another in love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have died, may they abide forever in heaven with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we also remember at this Mass, Maggie Garcia, for whom this Mass is being offered. Father, we come to you in faith as your children. Hear and grant these prayers according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gifts of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, and Han, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed to be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul yearn, is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God.
Let us pray. Grant that you are faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. As a reminder, we will not have the 3 p.m. parking lot adoration today and we will also not have the evening confessions. And again, a reminder that we will be resuming the 6.30 a.m. Mass tomorrow. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, cast into house, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.